everybody, welcome to the Three Away Podcast. I'm Jerks. Joining me today is, of course, my lovely co-host, JD McKinn. <laughs> and as well, Public Enemy 5-9. Uh, we actually got a, a little bit of a pop culture heavy uh, episode today, but it's going to be a fun one. Uh, it was a lot of stuff that we were actually I've actually wanted to talk about, but uh, let's jump into that with pop culture. Pop. 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 Sorry, I was, I was excited. <laughs> Avatar creators walk away from the live action series that is being produced by Netflix. What is going on in this terrible world? Article from uh. Polygon reads as Netflix live action adaptation of Avatar The Last Ebender faces its first major upheaval. Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Conitazoko, the creators of the original series, announced on Wednesday that they have left the project. DiMartino pinned a blog post, while Kino Soko took to Instagram to announce their decision. Neither one of them was specific in their complaints, but both cited creative issues with Netflix. Um, quote, to be clear, there is not a simple matter of what not, what is matter of us not getting our way, end quote, wrote Kony Tizuko. Quote, Mike and I are very collaborative people. We did not need all of these ideas to come from us as long as we felt those ideas were in line with the spirit of the, and integrity of Avatar. We would have happily embraced them. However, we ultimately came to the belief that we would not be able to meaningfully guide the direction of the series and quote. And uh, his partner pretty much echoed the same idea said. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, uh, this is um, disappointing, right? Because you don't have the creators of the damn show, which is super popular. I mean, that's the whole reason they're doing this uh live action stuff uh you don't have them giving their input their ideas their vision for where this show should be going where it should be heading yeah um it, it kind of makes me lose faith that it will be any good because we see adaptations where it just doesn't turn out well we see seen adaptations where it does uh, where yeah. this is gonna go i don't know but i had more confidence in it with the show's creators in there uh and now with their lack of um yeah man I, I i don't know it's hard it's hard to you know th they themselves saying whatever it ends up being that's not our vision like damn okay well mm. uh yeah so i uh, i don't know man it's hard did he I'm, I'm hoping again this is going to be one of the times where the fans rise up and create a big enough of a stir that netflix goes okay you know what let's see what we can do with these guys let's go back to what they want to do because that's what the fans want but we'll only have to be able to wait and see. Uh, who knows? I don't. It, apparently, it may be irrecon irreconcilable differences. It may not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it's going to be. We we'll have to wait and see what comes up in the next couple of weeks. But again, hopefully, they are able to work everything out and Netflix can get these guys back and do what we all love and what we all can see to do, and they don't screw it up again as bad as that. You know, abomination we saw a few years ago. So, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that unnamed movie. We I think not, it's we don't want to give it a name. I think it's too late. Like if the outrage isn't, which there was, but it just wasn't enough to really make Netflix change their mind. And I don't think there's going to be any blowback after now. So once the story gets old and time passes, like, yeah, I think it's too late. Um, Netflix has spoken, whatever happened that we don't know what was the reason, what was the disagreement? Mm -hmm. Um, it's yeah it's just weird yeah because netflix has done so much things right. right um so many things right with a lot of their shows and mm. like this you don't really hear this stuff a lot from netflix so what happened we don't know but we'll see yeah i mean uh, from my understanding uh usually when things like this happen it's 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 a difference between hey we we have your ip and we have the rights to it, so we pretty much can do what we want. You're only here more or less as a consultant, even though you yeah. created the series. Um, and I think something like that happened. Maybe they were going in a direction that they felt like needed more uh, CG or something. So that, of course, involves money. Uh, it can be a, a multitude of things, but so far they're both kind of like, this is, uh, what do they call it? Like a, 
uh what's that kind of breakup where it's okay <laughs> fuck it was it my, uh, yeah it was, yeah it was both like okay we broke broke up or whatever but no it's bull like you know something happened you know they're both trying to save face for the show um but it'll be interesting to see how uh how the show now comes out and like if they'll ever talk about what was actually the difference between what the creators original creators wanted and the creative uh directors on netflix wanted or what we see but uh yeah this this is yeah this kind of sucks i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah. but yeah. uh moving on here shroud one of the mystical creatures that disappeared from mixer <clears throat> has reappeared <laughs> on twitch once again yes ladies and gentlemen twitch is uh twitch's shroud is back he uh posted on uh twitter that he is uh decided to come back to uh twitch uh do you guys watch uh see his uh streams or uh know anything of shroud i know you guys are not really I, good yeah. on that scene. yeah i mean um <clears throat> it took forever he took like a month or mo he took a long time off yeah i think, I think it took feet. like two 45 days something like that he took yeah, a while yeah, yeah. a good thick long break uh grew a goatee yeah, uh, like nasty, dude. but yeah he's back on twitch i mean it's the right move for him i guess we were all wrong when we thought that these guys were gonna come out with their own streaming service uh no, no that's not yeah. the, that doesn't exist uh unfortunately that would have been great uh but um yeah he came back to the platform i think that gives him the most uh the most uh business uh and you know he he didn't leave in bad terms i think i think he left in good terms um so i you know of course twitch has set to him back with arms wide open yeah he got he a crap load of numbers. views on that first stream yeah, i don't he had know how huge many. numbers yeah so it's him you know dr disrespect ninja uh these are like the three main guys i think oh yeah, uh, the, the legendary streamer mon mm-hmm Oh yeah, and, and uh, so yeah, so uh, who you know these guys attract huge views. Uh, we've seen it with Doctor Disrespect. Uh, you know, uh, we you know we're seeing it with Shroud Ninjas doing this. We Ninja still kind of Ninja has been he's kind of been hopping between YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, and then I think there was uh, an article or something coming out that he wants to go to Hollywood, basically like be an actor. I'm I'm assuming like a TV mm. show or something. Mm -hmm. So Ninja is like growing, trying to grow his brand beyond just streaming. So I mean, yeah, more power to him. That's smart. Yeah, That's it makes smart. sense. Um, Shroud, and he doesn't need to, you know, Shroud nor Shroud, Ninja need to stream. Or Shroud, on the know, other hand, I feel like he he's more bound to streaming only because he's really good at the video games. Like he's really good. <laughs> And then there was rumors of him going pro on one of the games. Yeah, Valorant. like Valorant. Like uh, um, people were talking about him signing with the team, which I thought would have been badass. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, I think the guy's happy just to be streaming, make money that way. He doesn't need to. He has millions already. Yeah. So I mean, they bought out his contract on Mixer, so I mean, he's definitely got money right now. So it's not yeah. like he has to. Like, he needs to do this. I mean, if he, if he, and it's good that he took the forty-five days. Sometimes you guys, those these guys, they, they stream all year long they don't yeah. take any breaks they don't do anything like that so you, and you got to take that little time off every now and then if you're going to recharge your batteries and get back into what doing what you love to do so yeah i mean but, I'm, I'm assuming that's what he did he's like he's like yeah it was great i took some time off he did some yeah. promotional stuff and that's why he has to keep the goatee i was watching a little bit of one of his uh, <laughs> clips he was like he's like i can cut it off now and then do the promotional stuff or keep it, do the promotional stuff, and then have to kind of have to stay with it until like all the promo stuff has come and gone. So he was like, "Screw it, I'll keep, I'll stay with it." So that's why he has it. He looks so, he looks like a doppelganger. He looks weird. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he needs to yeah. shave it off. Uh, but moving on here, Epic Games, one of the big ones, uh, one of the big news uh, things that come out this week, Epic Games. So okay, let's start from the beginning. Uh, Fortnite. They have V-Bucks, if you guys don't know. That's mm -hmm. where they make all their money. Uh, well, V-Bucks. Uh, well, on the mobile side of the game, um, every time somebody makes a purchase, there's like a 30% uh, uh, percentage that uh, uh, Epic has to pay to the, the mobile platform, which is, I guess, uh, Apple and Samsung or whatever it, whatever other platform it is. Yeah. Um, out of nowhere, Fortnite or Epic Games all of a sudden said, you know what, let's get rid of that. And let's have our own like direct payment offer to lower the cost of V-Bucks. Because if anything, this is really just a move for them because they see their numbers kind of dwindling. 
like it's not it's still like pr pretty much one of the biggest games but this is just more or less like like okay let's let's try to get people back into the game again let's let's stay on top you know this is this is their thing this is what they're known yeah. for this is why they keep having the new seasons the new chapters is because they keep on quote unquote innovating and rejuvenating their 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 game and i feel like this is kind of like one of the things they were trying to do but they were also prepared for what happened after or what happened next because yeah. apple <clears throat> Uh, after after Epic said, okay, you don't have to go through Apple's uh, payment system to get your V-Bucks now. You can just go directly to us and you'll get a discount. And Apple said, uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're removing your game from our Apple store. You can no longer download download Fortnite. If, of course, Epic was, of course, prepared for this and said, okay, uh, we're going to take you to court. So... And, and on top of that, they they actually have, a, like, uh, they did, like, kind of, like, a parody of Apple's, like, original, like, yeah, uh, right. commercial of them. Like, yeah. Like, hey, we're, we're fighting the man, you know. So uh, join us. Be one of us. And it, it's it's beautiful. It's perfect. I loved it. <laughs> I was like, damn, these assholes knew what they were doing. They were ready for anything. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and at the same time, though, um, Samsung, of course, also pulled their game from their stores. Uh, the only difference is that you can still download Fortnite on on an Android phone. You just have to go to their website, direct website. Um, but of course, this is more lenient towards what's going on with Apple because Apple, Apple. One of the one of the reasons, of course, we go back to what happened with Xbox, with well, Microsoft, excuse me, and XCloud. XCloud is not going to be on Apple platforms on our iOS is because of that thirty percent. Uh, monetary like they want from each game like that's crazy like xcloud has like hundreds of games and you expect them to like give you 30 percent for each one on top of that 30 percent for every micro gen section that happens within those games which include like dlc and whatever like no f you you know like no that's crazy because on top of that like these these games are on uh pcs they're on um they're on a, a Ma uh, they're on Macs as well, like on the computers, and they don't ask for that kind of monetary income. So now Epic is taking it to both of them. They're both fighting each other for like basically more or less of what like a, a lot of the comparisons of I've been hearing are what happened with Taylor Swift and uh, the her music being on Spotify and, and Apple Music, where she felt like the music should be free. They, they like those companies need to pay for her stuff. But anyways. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think of this whole situation? Um, it's it's a weird one, man. You got a multi-billion corporation going up against another multi-billion corporation. So, you know, yes, Apple has put kind of like a stranglehold on things, but it's their marketplace. Uh, and Epic's over here trying to fight for suppose i mean i get it they're trying to fight for the little man but they're another multi-billion corporation so i i, I can't really I, I don't really have a side in this um i think it's just funny how it's gone they you know epic's gone about it with the whole video of, of the parody of the yeah. of the 1984 commercial that uh apple, apple did, did. I, yeah and then using their kids to go out and hashtag free <laughs> for like free for yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that was funny, but I don't know, man. Either way, it's kind of like, yeah, I want Apple to be more lenient and let the, open up the marketplace a little bit. But at the same time, bro, is their prerogative? Is there is their is their marketplace? If you don't like it, go elsewhere. And it's up to the consumer really to speak yeah. But that's with that's the problem though that they know you can just say that's your prerogative. You can go somewhere else, but they Apple knows they're the leading like phone or whatever yeah, that's being sold or whatnot and like it, where are you gonna go to go to samsung like you what, what are you gonna do with your uh apple tv what are you gonna you do know, with and, your airpods and, what are you yeah, gonna do true. with your apple watch like they have you in their ecosystem and they know that that's why they they're sticking to their guns with this uh 30 percent uh like return of uh any sales or whatnot jd well as well, oh, oh i'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. like you said you know it's it's apple's product i mean if you guys want to use their product you play by the rules. It's, that's, it's just that simple. You know, you can't just sit there. And obviously they were, they, you know, as you said, they had everything prepped up, ready to go. They, they intended to breach that contract that they agreed to because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you do, you sign an agreement, you sign a contract saying, hey, this is what we're going to put our stuff here. 
and you have it, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go with it. And I think they they were trying to get around that by saying that, that they're not getting rid of how you can pay with Apple. What they were, what they were doing is they were adding an extra thing where they were like, Hey, you don't have to go with them. You can pay directly to us. (laughs) To be honest, if they really, if they really wanted to do that, they should have just said, Hey, purchase your V bucks on our website. That'll apply yeah. to your apply to your thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I that, about that, that doesn't that doesn't like, go against Apple's rules. That's, I was like, that's, you don't you don't have yeah. to necessarily buy it on the mobile site, mm-hmm. right? But of course, we live in America. We like things easy and fast. <laughs> so having to, to do the workaround where we have to go to the the website to buy our V Bucks or go to the uh just the PC version of Fortnite, log in. Uh, get, go into the game, go into the market store, buy your V Bucks, go back or uh, buy all your stuff there, and of course it's all cross say cross platform, whatnot, not, and then go back to your phone and be like, oh, here it is. Like people, it, th- there's a reason why it's, this is like kind of like quote unquote a big deal is because of that kind of situation. Like people don't want it to be like like I guess quote unquote hard. They want it to be easy. So th- I mean, I I see why like all oh, this is happening. Oh, Lord forbid you don't get to be in your game for 30 seconds. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, yeah, and you know, it's just, it's people I mean, are just so weird these days. Yeah, like me as a someone who's big on Apple devices, uh, like you said, I have yeah, same. a little bit of everything. Hey, I, I, I was looking at I was looking at uh, Samsung prices. Oh, so was I, day. dude. I was like, yeah. XLive is going to be on, on uh, the Samsung phones. Oh, fuck. I got to go get that. But then I was yeah, like, so I was but like, then I looked at my watch, Apple watch. And then I looked at my AirPods, Apple product. And then I'm like, I looked at my Apple TV. I was like, fuck, man. They really got me. I, like, I kind of have yeah. to stick with the phone. <laughs> nah, I mean, my my watch is a little outdated. My my. Apple, you can still use your Apple um, AirPods, earbuds, yeah, yeah with Bluetooth. other stuff. Um, so I maybe. feel like right now <laughs> would be if I did it right now would be the time. And if Apple continues to kind of like shun other creativity and all this other stuff going on, where Android's much more open in that aspect, I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to look into it. Um, mm. You know, Samsung phones are right there, almost in the same price level. To be honest, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like their note, but I don't want to know. I think the note is too big. Yeah, I think no, I will go with the with the with the smaller one, and that's cheaper. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, you know, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know, JD. Anything more to add? No, I mean that's pretty much. It's like I said. You know, if 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 you want to, you want to play the game, you got to play the game. You know, and that's that's simply how it is. You just gotta you gotta work with what you got. And even if you, you know, if you want to find a way around it, you got to do it within the legalities of what they what they require you to do. You know, that's like, I mean, like, well, we, that's like one thing we always say in the Navy. You know, when you know the rules, you know how to bend them. You know, if you know the rules, you got to find a way to bend around the rules. And that's if and otherwise, this is going to happen. You're gonna you're gonna get your stuff taken off the off their site, off their uh, their services. You know, and it's it's legal. It's not a monopoly. It's just the way it is. I I'm. 100% for this only because this means that we should be seeing lower costs on not only on on the in-game transactions for those people that like to do that but also lower costs with the DLCs because a lot of a lot of the pricing now is based on the where they have to split everything at so you see you seeing a lower price on like I, honestly i don't think they're trying to completely get rid of that 30 percent. i think what epic is trying to do is kind of like have them bump it down like kind of like how they're doing on their uh epic uh games uh store that they have on on pc where they're only charging i believe like 12 percent, 30 percent uh like like game like per game purchase from a third party on their platform versus steam which is i think was 30 percent, but then they bumped it down a little bit or something like that i forgot what the the the, the percentages were but but uh, I was reading another article. I, I was looking for it, but I forgot where it is, um, where they were actually talking about how this is actually a good thing for us, the consumers, because it lowers costs for everything. It means they they don't have to bump up prices for their games. They don't have to bump up the prices for the tra- microtransactions, the DLC, to to make the ends meet from getting only back 70% of the 30 from uh, like each transaction on, the, well, right now we're talking about the mobile side, but the mobile platforms. So if if they have to like 
take less, that means they can do what Epic is, I mean, Fortnite is doing and lower the pricing on their V-Bucks. Yeah, but that's only going to be for a small period of time. You know what they're going to do. They're going to say, okay, we're going to keep this, you know, now we can now we can lower it. Then they're going to start to slowly increase it to where it finally gets back to that regular price. No, now they, 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 that they said, they're Fortnite said, I mean, move. Epic said that this is the new pricing for their V-Bucks. Then they're not moving it. Yeah, how many times have we heard that before? That we're not going to move this. Oh wait, we're changing it again. No, I mean I, mean, I believe that because they, the they're the same ones who actually push Sony to start uh, using more crossplay f uh, functionality on their platforms. So right now they have uh, they have my good faith that they're actually doing this for like the quote unquote the right cause. But yes, of course they're still a business and still trying to make money there. On, yeah. Uh, 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 but right now, the time, so. right, but right now I think they understand it's not really about how much money they can get out of one person right away. It's more of the longevity of keeping the same person paying over and over and over again. So I think that's what they're looking for. Not that just that big one payout. They're looking for that payout to be over several months, weeks, years, and et cetera. You know what I mean? So it, it, uh, I see it. It's it's cool. I, I'm not really big on like buying microtransaction stuff or DLCs. I'm like, if I play the game, I play the game as is, and it's great, good, right. end of story. But uh, yeah, so that's what's going on with Epic. And lastly here in pop culture, AMC theaters are reopening. August 20th for okay the 15 cent thing per ticket is kind of like what but there is some stipulations when it comes to the 15 cent ticket uh so yes uh AMC theaters uh this is from Polygon's article and pull it up after five months of being closed due to coronavirus pandemic AMC theaters is finally re ready to reopen its doors or at least a few of them on August 20th, the largest theater chain in the country will begin the reopening process in select cities, with more to follow in the weeks afterwards. The theaters were uh, open with a promotion that uh, AMC is calling movies, quote, movies in 2020 at 1920 prices, end quote. In a callback to the 1920s, a year AMC opened its first location, the company will offer 15 cent tickets when theaters reopen on August 20th. Movies that will be playing in theaters uh, when they reopen include Black Panther, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, Grease, and Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back, as well as the special 10th anniversary screening of Inception. As for new movies, the long-awaited release of the X-Men film The New Mutants will be one of the first films to greet Dear to Goas when it premieres on August 28th. A uh, week later, Tenet and the mysterious new Christopher Nolan film will open on September 3rd after being delayed by a little over a month. Thoughts? Um... Man, have fun, man. I'm I'm not uh I'm not trying to go into an enclosed space for hours to watch a movie. I wish they would have done this other years. Uh, all of a sudden now they want to celebrate their their anniversary. Uh, open theaters at 15 cents. This should have been a yearly thing, but whatever they want to do it now. Um, yeah, no, man. I'm not I'm not stepping foot inside a theater anytime soon. Um, uh, but. I mean, shit, fifteen cents, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it's not for new movies though. The, that that ticket pricing is only for old movies that have been. Out yeah, before. but man, Inception, like they got a good slate, bro. They really trying to spice mm -hmm. this up, like Inception, Ghostbusters. Like, bro, I would love to see Inception again in the theaters. Like, uh, yeah, that's true. That, that's a pretty uh, Back to the Future. Like, it's a pretty good lineup that they got there, trying to get people. Right. I mean, I, I never got to experience those films in theaters, so I wouldn't mind. But bro, fifteen them. cents, fifteen cents, like that place is gonna be packed. It's gonna be packed. No, no, Actually, they they're they're only, have about thirty percent capacity. Yeah, they're only doing thirty percent capacity. Mm, yeah. Um, I actually got an email from AMC regarding like their reopenings and they're basically talking about everything that they're adding and what they're doing. Uh, they're using like new air filters. They're, they're using like uh, Clorox to everywhere. <laughs> like yeah. they're, they hired some kind of like cleaning company to like, uh, I guess, teach them, show them and uh, how to like make sure everything's clean. Everybody's has to wear a mask. You have to wear your mask while you're in there 24 yeah. seven, unless you're eating your popcorn or drinking your drink, whatever. Um, they're actually going to be offering masks for a dollar a piece. As yes, well. and they will be selling the masks know. as well. Yeah. Um, uh, JD? Yeah, you won't be able to do refills on your drinks or your popcorn either, though. Yeah. That's, that's the other stipulation. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I might actually do it. I don't know. I'm kind of I'm, I'm, I'm on, come on, on the fence of it. Um, I mean, anyway, it would be kind of fun to see some of these old movies back in the theaters again. Right. Uh, but after even, even after the Centennial Celebration, you can still see some of the old movies for five bucks a piece. 
which is still pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think <laughs> let's see how it goes. I mean, I want to. I kind of want to see how this how the situation handles itself because, like, let, again, like said, let people test it first, guinea pigs, and right, we'll see. right. <laughs> let's see how it looks when they first do it. Uh, see how how it works out. If it works out pretty good, I might actually start going back to the theaters again because I I love the theater experience. It just yeah. it is expensive, but I love going in there. I love going in to see movies. You know, get because I don't have that surround sound and that you know studio setup that I that they have in there in my house. So be able to be able to go see that giant eighty foot screen with freaking you know shit blurring my ears and busting in my eardrums. You know when I'm when I'm watching explosions and shit. That's that's, that's fun. You know. So but again, you know, it's it's a matter of safety. A matter of you know, is, is everything going to be clean? Is everything right. going to be safe? Am I going to need to come in a full, you know, full body hazmat suit just to watch a movie? Yeah. You know, who knows? So, but I mean, it, you know, it looks like they're, they're planning to bring back uh, Bill and Ted, move on and Antebellum as, as part of the, uh, some of the first movies as, as part of the lineup. So, I mean, getting to see those in theaters would actually be pretty cool too. So. Um, yeah. The Bill and Ted movie, I think I'm going to watch cause that's going to be on demand. So I, I'm going to wait yeah, for that. I, I think demand. they said there's like a, there's like a two week thing or well, the one, the deal they did with universal, I don't know if that extends to every other uh, movie publisher or whatever, but that'd be interesting to see how long they, um, other movies will last in theaters. Yeah. And then once they come to on demand, what's the difference between like people actually going to the theaters to watch them versus people watching them at home. Yeah. Um, but one of the other things here also just, uh, uh, clear up while I was talking about the, the safety measures they're doing, uh, this is again from Polygon. These measures include mandatory masks for everyone, reduced seating capacity to ensure social distance screenings, advanced cleaning procedures between showings and the MERV, uh, 13 air filters in the HVAC system as of all possible theaters. Uh, so th those are like some of the things they're doing on top of like, uh, having, uh, just, taking all the precautions of course cdc stuff um i want to go <laughs> i was talking yeah. about i was like like literally like a week or two ago i was like dude i miss going to the theaters like it like it, watching it at home is fun and everything but i miss like going out pretty much like having a date night and like you know ordering my popcorn sitting in theaters big old screen yeah. or whatever and like you know, it's 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 why people some people like going to the like football games versus like, watching them at home or something because you know, it's a different experience. It's an experience basically. Um, I'm probably gonna go like early in the morning. I I feel like like I see I I see Lowe's doing that, but I'm like, there's a lot of hypocrites out there too who are still going out. There's still restaurants open. You don't think you're the only person going into a restaurant? Like, uh, no. Uh, don't act like you know it, this is like oh this is this is where i draw the line at a movie theater like you're, you're literally just sitting down watching a movie get up and go you know right, like man. for me hey. i'm like that's fine i'll wear Not my mask fun. i wear my mask at work all the time if anything i'll probably take some sanitizer with me you know wash uh clean my hands whenever i get up or whatever i got i got gloves i can actually yeah wear i mean you can wear gloves of course yeah. like i i don't i don't see like the big issue as far as like uh being like higher level of concerns for a theater versus for a, a restaurant, uh, a mall, uh, uh, any other place, any other like play store, coffee shop, whatever, et cetera. Like, yeah. like if anything, this is probably like Laura in the ring for that kind of stuff of the hierarchy, but, uh, that's happening August 20th, 20th, 20th for a reopening. 20th. Yeah. Uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, let us know in the comments below, if you're going to a movie theater, uh, again, um, that would be actually interesting to see hear from others. Um, that'd be it for pop culture. Let's move on into sports. Boo, boo, boo. Touchdown! It's a home <laughs> run. Go! Sports. 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 College <laughs> football delays. Now, I think I put this in here. I saw it somewhere, and then I completely forgot to put the link on the thing where I saw it because I was at work. I have I have heard a little bit about this. I don't I don't have any sources, but I heard this on the radio the other day, talking about I think Big Ten and Big Twelve are separating their championships, their seasons. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the the Big Ten has uh, postponed uh, their season, um, <laughs> and it looks like Pac twelve followed them. Uh, two big conferences have postponed their seasons to the spring, it looks like. Yeah, that's right. Um, a, lot, a lot of other um, uh, programs are still playing, though, in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, the NCAA 
has done away with their fall programs, meaning that all these fall sports are done except college football. Um, the money maker. What I, <laughs> exactly. What I think this has shown is exactly that, Jerks, that um, most of these colleges really aren't operating as colleges anymore. That, that's a side hustle. That's a side thing they do is to educate people. Uh, these are now football programs. Um, and granted, most of these colleges are in states or in cities where there is no professional football team. Okay, so I get it. College football is the biggest thing there. Uh, there's really no other professional sports. I understand a little bit in that aspect that these people don't have anything but this team, but these college football teams. But to um, put people's lives in danger, I mean, Rutgers uh, just reported that they had over 40 students mm -hmm. that were infected. Like, 40 students, bro. Like, these, like, come, how are you going to control these programs that have, you know, 60 players in their squad, not counting coaches, uh, staff, like. No, you can't. Yeah, the NFL is having trouble with it. How is a college Ooh. program going to deal with that? Um, it's just really shady to me, man. Really shady. Um I mean, one of the Pac-12 teams, um, uh, frick, uh, one of the, the Huskies, I forget their, whatever, they're fine with it. They're saying, yes, that was the right decision. And then they made it public, like, yeah, we're going to be, you know, losing like 40 million bucks in this. Like, there's big money in these, but they're like, you know, they're, they agree that, you know, uh, you know it, it's, it's what has to be done. Yeah. And you see these Southern college teams that, it's entrenched in their culture, oh, yeah. and it's, these yeah. guys <laughs> don't want to postpone anything. These guys don't want to give up their college season. There's money to be had, uh, and they're willing to put these players' lives at risk. And my argument is, well, then, okay, if you're going to treat it so much as a as a business, then pay these guys, but they don't want to do that either. Um, so it's a whole mess, man. Uh, I, it's really shady to me. College football has been shady for to me. For years, yeah. uh, these guys are really fighting against paying these guys when, you know, they make millions and millions and billions of dollars off of them. So it's a really shady thing for me. I don't I don't like college football. It's why I don't watch it. it it's it, yeah. No, it's, it's right. Yeah, I'm with you. It's, it's been sports is mostly football. It's been more about getting these players to make money for the college rather than focusing on making sure that they have a good education. And I think that's yeah. Just, this is just yeah again like you said this is proof that they're they're more based on yeah that the, the, the education is just a side hustle for the college you know yeah. and I've, I've I've gone to some four uh, four year college those shit that shit's freaking expensive yeah, yeah, exactly for, for absolutely yeah. no reason I mean there's no reason it should be that expensive because I mean I've, I go to a community college for like uh, literally a quarter of the price I was going for half time mm -hmm. at a regular college you know and that's just ridiculous so I mean it's just the the, the it, hopefully this this like I said hopefully this will be a, a chance to reevaluate the programs that they have for sports as well as for the education and maybe we can get some changes made. I'm I'm not going to keep my hopes up, but hopefully we can see something like that happen and we can get things back on track to re, where our our education system can do an overhaul and get back on track with the uh, getting yeah where they need to be. We're asking for a lot right there. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. I mean, oh, well, hopefully, hopefully, they're, 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 they're someplace so entrenched in their sports programs that it's going to be, you know, it, it, they're going to be digging in their feet saying, no, we don't want to do that. And it's what's got to be done, you know I mean? Cause it's again, sports is becoming way too more, becoming more powerful than the education. And that's, that's not the way it really should be. So mm -hmm. yeah. I'm miracle. <laughs> 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 Uh, but yes, moving on here in sports, uh, NBA, they have, we have a short recap comment commentator Lowe's. I don't know. Oh yes. NBA. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, the, the eight games in the bubble have concluded. Uh, we got a pretty solid idea of who's in the playoffs. There is a little bit still to be said as of the recording of this podcast. So, um, uh, positions are done. Every playoffs have been decided, except for the eight spot in the Western Conference. Uh, we're gonna have a one-game playoff between Memphis Grizzlies and the Portland Trailblazers. 
Um, the Suns just missed out on making it into the playoff. Uh, Memphis won. Portland won. Portland had to lose. They won a, a, a very close game against the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, almost lost that game. Left the door open for the Suns. But unfortunately, Devin Booker, who's been going off, uh, just amazing. And uh, the Suns playing so well. They were in that eight-game winning streak. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't lose a game in the bubble. They, I mean, they had to. They had to win out. And they did what they had to do. But unfortunately, they couldn't make it into the playoff. I was just kind of rooting for them, the underdog. But, you know, we have two very solid teams in Memphis and uh, the Portland uh, Trailblazers that are going to do the one playoff game. So at the time of this recording, we still don't know what happened there. Uh, when this comes out on Monday, I'm sure we'll all know and the playoff seedings will be decided. Also, some other news in the NBA. Um, the uh, Pelicans, New Orleans Pelicans have fired their coach, Alvin Gentry. Uh, so he was with them for five years. I mean, I agree with the, the decision. They gave this guy enough time to, you know, to build, to develop his players, make them competitive. Just hasn't done that. Hasn't turned out the way they wanted. Um, and to be honest, their team, uh, you know, they just got that rookie, uh, Zion Williamson. So mm-hmm. it's kind of a weird uh, with me, weird to me at the same time because you just gave this guy like a, a top 10 player and now you're firing him. But whatever. Uh, I guess they wanted more. I, I don't know. I don't know. But he's gone. Also, <laughs> um, uh, the what happened? So who the hell are the Pelicans? No. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> now and um, the Sacramento have uh, fired um, uh, D- uh, Vlade Divac, who's like one of their legendary players, yeah. and their interim GM in that in that time will be Joe Dumars uh, from uh, Detroit fame. Uh, a lot of people are saying they should just leave Demar, give him the reins for good, uh, but. Right now, he still has the interim title. Uh, I think it's good for Sacramento. They need to change. They need to do something. Maybe this guy can do that. Uh, but, yeah, playoffs are about to start. Uh, I'm hyped. Uh, we're going to see a lot of good matchups. We're going to see Rockets against Oklahoma. Um, you know, whoever wins out that eight spot will take on the L.A. Lakers. So it's going to be good, man. It's going to be some good matchups. Playoffs are finally here. Sport playoffs, like, Sports, you know, we're, we have some playoff system finally. And NBA has been doing it right. No cases in their bubble. They're keeping everything tight. You're suspended. You're, you're out of the team if, you, if we catch you doing something. So they're doing it the right way. It's worked. The models work. Uh, their players are dedicated. And the games are really good. So The Rockets uh, are like fourth or fifth in the, in the, in the season. They're fourth. Yeah, they're fourth. fourth and they're going up against the fifth. Uh, team, which is Oklahoma. Chris Paul coming back to take on the former team that traded him away. Uh, <laughs> He's still be playing, man. I'm an old man. It's time to retire, baby. Yeah, well, they're playing pretty good, <laughs> and they're in that fifth spot, so uh, a lot of people are actually saying that Oklahoma City can actually take take the Rockets. Uh, so it's going to be entertaining, and I'm sure Chris Paul really wants to beat the squad. So uh, Just we'll to see. round out the playoffs here, Lakers are still waiting between Portland and Memphis. Uh, Rockets are playing OKC. Denver's playing Utah. Clippers are playing the Mavericks. And in the East, it's Milwaukee versus Orlando. Indiana versus Miami. Boston versus Philly. And Toronto versus Brooklyn. Yeah, the Toronto's like first rounds are kind of like, we already know who's going to win this this one. The Western Conference first rounds, like those are the ones where like, man, you know, either either of these teams could win this. So it's going to be really competitive. The yeah. East, I think, is going to get more competitive right there in the second and third rounds. But, um, but yeah, it's going to be good either way. All right. And lastly here, you guys been watching Hard Dogs? <laughs> oh, no. Nah, I saw that it uh, came out, but yeah. I still haven't caught the episodes. They're covering two teams at They're the same time. They're covering both right? of the L.A. teams, the Rams Ooh, and yeah. the Chargers. Uh, I, yeah, I, was, I might have I, to catch it. I was randomly like watching stuff on on uh, HBO last night, and then I saw mm-hmm. Hard Knocks is on there. I was like, "Oh shit, I forgot about that." I, I didn't know they were still doing Ooh. it, so I actually sat there and watched the episode. And 
honestly, the whole thing was just basically their safety procedures, all the testing they're doing. Uh-huh. Uh, barely, you barely saw any football. <laughs> but it is interesting all the things they're doing in LA uh, regarding the COVID situation. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of the players are like. It, it's funny watching these players get the nasal swabs because you see these big ass dudes, you know, Aaron Donald, all <laughs> swole, like cut, and they're all afraid of this like little like Q-tip going up their noses. It, it it's funny watching. Um, but yeah, uh, it's really interesting to watch though. Like again, like just the procedures they're going through. Um, in their locker rooms, everything is spread out. Like they're not all bunched up together. All the like I, I forgot whose locker room it was. It was either the Chargers or the Rams, but uh they're actually separated by like partitions for their locker rooms in their lockers. Uh yeah. so, some of the other players are not like, you know, star athlete athletes for them or whatever, the starting players or whatnot. They have like a another room where all their locker rooms are separated. Like it's a huge room with different separations of the lockers. Yeah. Um uh I think they were saying in LA because of the weather, they actually taken advantage of, of being outside a lot. Like I think the Rams built like this whole huge, like canopy looking thing outside where they yeah. have meetings, they have their, their uh, gym, whatever. Might as well. Yeah. It's all outside. Um, they have to like wear their mask all the time. Minus the times they're actually like playing football with each other. Uh, it, it's, it's it's interesting, dude, seeing everything they're doing, trying to bring this game back because they're not the only ones. And they did bring up like like examples of what happens when you f- basically fuck around and don't take this shit serious where I think they were saying the Marlins had like 19 players or something like that. 18 yeah. players that had pe- tested yeah. positive for COVID. So they're like using that as an example. Like, hey, if you guys want to be here, you want to play your fo- this football game, the, the game that we love and, you know, sweat, cry, bleed for and whatnot – just follow right. along these rules and we'll, we'll continue playing. We'll continue on top of that, you know, continue making money. But, uh, yeah, I was watching that. I I, I just, I, I don't know if you guys had watched it. So I just brought it up here at the end. No, I, I did I skim agree. through it. I haven't caught it, but I, it, it is interesting. I, I do want to catch it. Uh, it's hard knocks always is a good production. Uh, yeah. I'm sure even with a not, not a lot of content, they could still make a good show. So, uh, I'm, I'm interested in catching it. All right, and let's end it right there for sports and move into gaming. Game over. Game over. Finish him. Uh, speaking of game over, Halo Infinite has been delayed. <laughs> Good job, Microsoft. Uh, yes, Halo Infinite has been delayed until 2021. It was supposed to launch alongside the Xbox One X, which actually is confirmed to be releasing this November, just not an exact date. Uh, but now it's delayed. Uh, what do you guys think? I think I'll be waiting to buy my Xbox uh, Series X. Yeah, what? unfortunately. Uh, okay, this is just bad, like all around, bro. Like, first everyone kind of knows this game has to release with the system. If, if mm-hmm. Xbox really wants to like, which I know they're going in a whole other direction with their program, with what they want to do with Xbox. It's now Game Pass. I get it. But you still want to sell systems, right? You're not just yeah. releasing a system out there just for, you know, uh, for game. a couple of million to sell. No, you want your, your system to sell big time. So with now your marquee game, like, like, what else is there, okay? Second, you don't announce this until after the reactions you get from that bad showing you had yeah. of, of showing gameplay from the game. Like, really, we didn't, you didn't, we didn't hear anything of this. If this really was something that was going to be done before, it would have been announced then and there. Yeah. But no, yeah. all the the backlash about the graphics, how the game is running, then you d- announce, okay, we need to we need to delay this game. It really shows that they were going to release this game not really at its top peak. They were just going to put it out there. Yeah, but uh, nowadays, don't you don't you always expect like some kind of day one patch? Like correct issues with games. Yes. But I, uh, I think I think that's what three four three was saying. Came like, hey, you know what? Everybody's doing it. But then I think at this at this point I, I believe either Uncle Phil or somebody at Microsoft stepped in and said no fuck no 
Like, if you're going to re- release this game, it's got to be working top notch, no issues, mm-hmm. completely playable. We don't want you to do what you did with the Master Chief Collection, where we released yeah. it and it was a piece of fucking shit. Like, <laughs> like no. Honestly, at this point, too, like, uh, sorry, I, I know I'm like taking over your what your thoughts were, but like, like, 343 have zero faith in them. Like, they haven't done anything to prove that they're fucking, like, competent, mm-hmm. that they know what they're doing with the Halo franchise. Um, like I, I'm over at 343. Bring somebody else in. Uh, <laughs> right now, you're literally just developing a game, one game, with a one brand game. new engine that you developed for a console that you're only supposed to release on PC. PC is easy because you work on PC to make these games, um, and and now you're still having issues. Like fuck no, dude. Like uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm more like F343. Delay the game, make it good. That's fine. Like I, I don't care because in the end, I'm still gonna get both, like Xbox and PlayStation. Like I don't mm-hmm. care, mm-hmm. but yeah. but they're not really. This is not my like where it's for me. Like the issue. This is for more the person who's like who doesn't stream, who's a casual player, who likes video games but just wants them to work right off the bat and likes you know certain type of games. Like that's that's where they're like. Well, why am I gonna get an Xbox? They don't have Halo. You have to have Game Pass, but I don't need an Xbox for Game Pass. So yeah, this this sucks for their for them. But I'm just like, make it good, whatever. I don't care. JD, I, I'm just I'm upset that they're you trying to use coronavirus as the excuse. I mean, to, you know, take a page from Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Okay, we heard you guys' complaints. Mm-hmm. Give us some time. We're gonna fix it. And That's then boom, think. movie of the year. Exactly. Right. <laughs> hey, okay, you know what? We heard you guys. We heard you guys. What you had to say? Yeah. A little bit of time. We're gonna, it. we're gonna fix it up. We'll make it better for you. And it, but it's gonna be a little bit later. Just let yeah. us work on it. That's all they Good. had. To, saying coronavirus. That's bullshit. I mean, we know it's not coronavirus because again, yeah, they were ready to release in November, and all of a sudden, oh well, coronavirus is stopping us from releasing in November. Yeah. Bullshit, you know. I agree. Don't lie to us. Don't 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 try to blow smoke up my ass. Just give me the <laughs> just give me the truth. Let's go. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I mean. I don't mind them delaying the game. Um, I under I I'd rather a game get delayed and be a, a nine or a ten out of ten instead of it being released and it's an eight or a seven. Um, so I'm off. I'm, I'm fine with the game being delayed. I agree with you, JD. I think they should just be uh, honest and upfront if they really want the community's goodwill. Just be honest, bro. Like, hey, all right, we messed up and we're gonna make it better. Um, and I agree with Jerks as well. Three, four, three. In the time they've been given this this franchise, haven't really done much with it. Haven't pushed it forward. Uh, have had to go back and 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 backtrack into their stuff. Uh, I, just ha- I mean, they just haven't done anything with it. And now you're entrusting them with the biggest with your biggest franchise at the biggest moment probably in your company's uh, lifetime. Uh, you're releasing a new system, uh, and they just can't come through. Uh, so I agree. My trust in 343 is, is not there. Um, they'll be releasing, I, I imagine in March in the spring, yeah, uh, four months after the release of the console. Uh, it better be fucking good, man. It better be a 10 out of 10. You cannot mess this up. And I just don't feel that 343 could probably do that. I mean, to be honest, I keep rewatching that trailer and I, and, and I, at first I watched it, I was fine with it. I keep rewatching it and I cringe because the animation, the voice acting is just kind of cringe, man. I, I I cringe now more looking back at it. They need to do some work, man. They need to do some work. Well, I mean, two things for me on this on this as well. I mean, first off, the one thing I always gave props to Blizzard about was that when I when they would have a problem with their games, they said, OK, hey, you know what? We can't put this out right now because it's not as what we, what we expect. We're going to put it out later. Give us some time. We're fixing it. So, I mean, yes, you'd be expecting a game, and it may take you about an extra six, eight months to get that game, but at least you know when it came out, it was going to be top tier. You know, that's always the good thing. And yeah. the second thing, Halo 4 came out strong. I'm going to give them to you. that. Halo 4 actually was, was, I thought, was really good because it gave you something new besides the Covenant to fight against. It gave you, you, you got to talk about the, the, the previous race that was creating all this other stuff. And Spartan Ops, I think, I thought was great too because it gave you some time in between games to still keep playing the storyline. Yeah. But you, you, it was multiplayer, so you could play along with friends, and you could still progress the storyline some more. And they ended that too soon as well. I, I hated that. 
I really hate that. He's I, mean, like, that was, I mean, honestly, honestly, I forgot about bit, Spartan yeah. Ops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yes, yes, it wasn't Master Chief, but it was. A, it helped progress the storyline some more, and it gave you a little more more to play along until the time frame come. But yeah, you know, again, you know, it's just like I said, they need to stop stop pussyfooting around and just just do what we know they what the storyline is. Go with what we know we got going on here, and stop trying to screw it around. You know, it's just it's just you're right. Three four three is is, is kind of messing up a lot. They're, they're taking a, a story that we've had before, and they're kind of abominizing it and they just need to kind of get back to the roots you know well just to close that part out on halo uh it is a sequel to halo 5 um it is a semi-soft reboot for the series as well and um a lot a lot what they showed in the in the showcase where they actually finally showed the, the gameplay it was from running from a pc um so yeah. i wasn't too shocked when i saw that it was being delayed again like I, I did, I did like what Sony did, where they were showing off their games and they were saying, "Hey, these games are running on the PlayStation, so expect them to play and look like this." But um, and Xbox did not. Xbox was like, "No, this one's playing running on a PC, and you know, whatever." I was like, oh, "With wow. the same capabilities of yeah, the Xbox One, like, no, yeah. then running on an Xbox Series X, <laughs> like Jesus." But anyways, yeah. uh, I will say this: Halo Five. Halo 5, the multiplayer was good, but that story was trash. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they, they need to do a lot, man, to gain back confidence. Yeah. And and Infinite better do that. But from what I saw in the trailer, that opening scene with the... No, bro, cringe. Just, just cringe, bro. <laughs> just All cringe. Right. Uh, also, just, just to continue here and finish up on Xbox, uh, the Xbox Series S has supposedly leaked... Uh, according to this uh, article from, uh, what is this, The Verge. Uh, so, apparently there's a Xbox Series X uh, controller in the wild, a white one. They're calling it the Robot White. Now, mm -hmm. supposedly these were bought like on Craigslist or something, I think, or eBay, I think. I forgot where he bought them at. Uh, but anyways, on the box, it actually says compatible with Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. And that's mm -hmm. that's kind of a thing where we're like, hey, you guys haven't said that out loud yet. Like, whoa, well, what? Mm -hmm. So more or less, it, not really a shocker because we already kind of knew that was going to happen. Uh, I mean, what else are you going to call it? You know, just to continue <laughs> your series. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. What, what do you guys think about this? I mean, it's a good alternative. Uh, PlayStation has shown it. They got a discless uh, system. We don't know the price, but I imagine it'll probably be a hundred bucks less. Some people are saying fifty bucks less, which is not much of a big difference. But um, it's a cheaper alternative for those people that maybe don't want as powerful a console, or maybe that's all that it's doing is just discless. Maybe it's the same amount of power. Whatever the case is, another alternative for people that, um, you know, want that option. I think it's great. Giving people options. Hey, man, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, I want the most powerful. I want the one with all the bells and whistles. But yeah. That's just me. Not everybody is like me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not surprised by this. Um, I, you know, everybody who's kind of been keeping up with the leaks and rumors kind of already saw this coming uh they had a project lockhart i think is the name of yeah. what this system was mm -hmm. was in the, the the code name for it so yeah uh yeah man i mean i'm not surprised uh i'm just kind of want to man let's get prices out there we've been waiting long enough we're uh, uh you know a couple you know four months from release and we don't even know what these costs pre-orders haven't gone up like just yeah. put it out there just get it all out there. Tell us what the hell you have to sell. Give us prices so we can decide what the hell we're going to buy, what what we're going to buy. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it, you know, some of the stuff on here, and to be honest, I'm not really impressed with the Series S. You know, I mean, it looks like it's a slightly upgraded version of the Xbox One X. I mean, and you're not even getting full resolution. You're only getting 1084. So, I mean, it's like, why would you purchase this? <laughs> There's some people yeah. who don't don't I mean, have a 4K what, what TV. Um, yeah, I mean, why would you, you talk about the resolutions for for the for the lower version of the console? Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's well that's the point because it's cheaper. Yeah, but why, <laughs> I mean, so, 
The Xbox One X is, is, has the same resolution. That's actually, I think it has a better resolution, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but it's we also don't know the X. Why would I spend all this money on this? It's also the X. Here. There's an Xbox. But we don't know. We don't Xbox know the exact X. specs of it. We yeah, don't I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, look, look at it right now. <laughs> I mean, look at it right now. The only thing I see that might be better is is the uh, CPU. I mean, other than that, you just stick with your Xbox One X if you're going to play these games. I mean, they discontinued that. I know, but you can still get them used at you know, like GameStop or other places like that. So I mean, mm -hmm. it's just. Or if you already have one, why would you upgrade? You know, to, to what, that's what I'm saying, just to the to the Series S. Why would you upgrade to a Series S versus a Series X? You know, I mean, it just. Well, that's, well, all the we don't know the that, that's 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 on a person that's been in the PlayStation ecosystem and is thinking about moving yeah. to Xbox. That's what that's for. Well, you know, okay, now that makes sense. But I mean, if you're an Xbox Xbox owner. Why would you upgrade to the Series S at the, at the just the specs I'm seeing than versus the Series X? You know, Series so, X. I mean, you know, it's still it just I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I get know. you. I, I get just, you there. I just think it's just just it's just it's. I understand a discless version. I don't understand this version. I think this version just makes no sense. It's going to cost them more money than I think it's going to make them, and I I think it's just going to be a waste of time for them. All right. Well, well, it's, well, yeah, yeah, they're probably gonna lose anyways. Uh, moving on here. Uh, lastly, in gaming, Cyberpunk twenty seven seven seventy seven seven. Don said, "Hut, it finally had another episode of the Night City Wire episode two. Uh, I actually, uh, I think I, I think I was watching it actually, but I was at work, so I wasn't really paying attention. I was just looking through it. <laughs> I was like." I'm like, what am I? What? What's what? Like, what am I looking at here? I don't I don't care. The game is is it out yet? No. Okay, whatever. But uh, right. yeah, Lo said he watched it, the whole thing. What what happened? Uh, so yeah, Cyberpunk. Uh, they kind of just went over um some stuff. Uh, the main thing was that you you'll be able to choose between three paths. Uh, I didn't know about this. I know that it was on the Game Informer uh cover because uh game cyberpunk Informer. was on the Holy game informer God. cover uh last month it came out on that uh, originally and then they uh, they showed a video uh this presentation about it and yeah three paths uh there's like the corpo there's the uh city the the city kid and then there's the uh the guys that live on no the mad. outside of the badlands yeah whatever but whatever mm -hmm. three paths it kind of it does affect how your story and your dialogues might turn out down the road, you know. So Corpo is obviously more intelligent. You might get more insight on the business sides of things. City kid, you're more you're a street kid, right? So um, you you're more roughed up. You you know you have a harder upbringing, so that affects your dialogue choices. So I, I kind of like it. You you give some uh, people uh, a little bit of indication of what kind of paths they want to take. They, sh they showed a, a snippets of each path. I like it. Uh, different people uh, uh, are, are choosing different things, and I think that's cool. Play how you want to play. Uh, they also went into a little bit on the music of the game. I actually downloaded the music. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> uh, on like Spotify and stuff like huh? that. Huh? Isn't it on Spotify and other platforms like that? The cyberpunk, yeah. cyberpunk music? Yeah, Spotify, Apple Music. Yeah, like uh, there's like they got this actual rock band and the rock band acted uh, as characters in the game and Ooh. made music. So um, they made a whole freaking album just for this game, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and then they went into um, the weapons, which uh, looked pretty cool. They showed some of that stuff off. But yeah, they just went more, a little bit more deeper into the game. Uh, I'm hyped for it. I mean, every time they show the game, it looks better and better. Um, uh, yeah, that... that uh, um developer uh what are they called um uh cd project red uh, city cd project red yeah they're going all in bro like they're working their asses off they want to release this game and and, and ha have a good showing uh it's gonna probably like right now uh you know ghost of Tsushima, animal crossing are like my top two for the year yeah. uh this game looks like it might blow everything out of the water. I don't know, but it looks like it, bro. Like the amount of innovation they're doing it. Um, it's not just another open world game. Uh, CD Projekt has shown that they're leaders when it comes to open world games. Uh, and it looks like they're trying to innovate again on the on that uh, genre. So I'm excited for this game. All right. JD? I mean, it sounds like they got the, the three, you know, D&D archetypes, which is, you know, fighter, rogue, and wizard. 
So mm. I just kind of went, well, you know, whatever you want to come from. But I think, yeah, I mean, it's it's from what anything I've seen so far, I didn't actually chance to watch this, mm-hmm. but from the stuff I've seen so far, it actually looks like it could be pretty interesting. Again, like I said, I call it, I think it's GTA 2077, but, you know, it, it's kind of, <laughs> originally that's what it looks like to me. So, but I, again, it's, it still looks like it could be an interesting game to play. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested in where, when it will come out. And uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see when it does. All right. Let's end our topics there and close it out with our final punches los uh my final punch uh watch me on twitch.tv <laughs> uh i need like 12 followers uh to make it to 50 so help a brother out uh follow me on twitch thank you twitch.tv forward slash what public enemy 59 there you all right go. Uh, JD? Um, I guess my final punch is, I guess, uh, you know, this is our, this is what, second, the end of our second, you guys' second year? Oh, shit! I forgot! I yeah. Uh, yeah, this is our two-year anniversary episode. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I completely forgot. I, I well, even thanks, have a year of the notes. <laughs> I completely forgot. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's been two years. Two long two years yeah uh, with you guys for six months now this has actually been pretty cool I, mean, I actually had a lot of fun doing this so hopefully uh we keep going for a lot longer and you know yeah, maybe we'll see if we can pick up some more <laughs> stuff along the way all right uh i guess oh shit i completely forgot i should have put that in the beginning <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah two years holy crap um i guess my final punch is uh i don't know man um Make, uh-huh, you can't follow mine. Uh-huh. Make, make Halo good again. <laughs> Hashtag make Halo good again. Hashtag free Fortnite. And if you guys are watching anything on these streaming services, check out Nora from the from Queens. It's actually a pretty funny show. I was watching it. We finished the first season yesterday. Um, let's see what else. That's it. Yeah, that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for everybody watching on the YouTube side, listening on podca- podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all of those other lovely ones brought to you by thank you to Anchor. Anchor lets us do all that podcasting audio stuff for free. Thank you. I appreciate you. Um, and of course, you can find us on uh Twitch, we actually do have a Twitch channel. <laughs> uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, Instagram and your mom. Um, that's it. We're super long. Okay, bye bye. See ya.